This episode of The Bill and Callie Show is brought to you by... For over 28 years, Creative Carpet and Flooring has provided not only one of the largest selections of carpet and flooring in the area, but also customer service that exceeds expectations. Featuring leading brands like Mohawk, Stanton, and Shaw, their friendly and knowledgeable staff is there to help you choose the products that are right for you and are available to help answer any questions along the way. Once you become a client, you'll get newsletters recognizing new customers, offering contests, sales, and special thank you incentives for referrals. Creative Carpet and Flooring, with locations in Mokina, Illinois and Highland, Indiana. A family-owned business providing great products and service to families like yours. Hello and welcome to our show. Uh, this afternoon, our guest is Lori Postma, who is with the Northwest Indiana District 1 Emergency Operations Center. Did I get that all in there correct? You sure did. Uh, well, Yay. welcome. Yeah, Kelly's very surprised because I usually bumble something up. So, uh, welcome to our show. And uh, we come here with a pretty serious message. And that's why we wanted to get you on the show to... Uh, uh, hear what's going on at the emergency center and their um, uh, their interaction with all the issues going on with the uh, uh, COVID-19 virus outbreak. So why don't you um, tell us a bit about the center and what it's going through right now with all the uh, dilemmas that are going on out there? Well, it's it's been an interesting ride. So uh, when COVID started to impact our area, the District 1 uh, Healthcare Coalition, they uh, stood up what we call uh, an emergency operations center. And that is was requested and the District 1 Incident Management Team, which is a division of the Indiana Department of Homeland Security, are the people who are manning this. It was brought in for coordination of donations and attempts to find PPE for our healthcare coalition partners and our uh, hospitals, as well as to help out the, uh, the uh, uh, public sector as well, like your police and fire and EMS. So that's what we're out here doing. Mm. We're also trying to provide the message uh, that is not conjecture, not guessing, not any of that stuff. It is a realistic message of vetted information so that people get the real answers instead of hearing what social media and don't know whether it's real or not. Right. Cause I, you know, that's, that's one of the fears that's out there is a lot of people are, and that's something we've been going through for the past three years is uh, people are not sure, you know, and, and uh, they align Right. They're not sure how to validate the information. So it is helpful to know that the organizations out there are doing that. Um, so uh, what is, from your perspective, uh, from uh, the District 1 Emergency Operations Center, what do things look like out there now? Well, again, we're a coordination effort. So people have been uh, very generous in donating the left leftover masks that they might have from industry or from, um, for example, like veterinarians offices and uh, tattoo parlors and uh, things of that nature. We've, we've been very blessed with some donations and we were able to assist the hospitals with some very timely PPE while waiting for the strategic national stockpile to be delivered from the government. Right. Unfortunately, those things kind of trickle down sometimes, and um, as they started to arrive, they started very small with um, minimal things for the hospitals, and so with some donations from the unions and from the business and trades, we were able to get a nice small package for each hospital and deliver that to them so that they had some PPE to use until they are able to get some more. So this is District 1, the Indiana District 1 that we know, right? The, the geographically. Right. That, yeah, geographically that covers Lake County, Porter, 
LaPorte, Newton, and Jasper County. So, my gosh, how many hospitals are there in that area? Quite a few, I'd imagine. There are 17. 17 major. So, you, uh, you've you been trying to coordinate efforts with donations from various different veterinarians, uh, people who have extra masks. Yep. And uh, can you uh, uh, can you state what type of mask that is also? Well, actually, we're looking for surgical masks and uh, N95 masks or masks that equal that. Like in industry, sometimes they're called R95, R99, R100, or P95, P99, P100. And all those masks are particulate masks, and that's what keeps away the virus while people are uh, working on patients. So they're close-knit enough to, to keep the yes. virus out. So they that's keep the key 95 thing. or better of the particulate in the air. And that was the concern, too, that uh, people were going out and buying up all the uh, masks that the trades use for just dust protection, but they aren't tight enough to keep out the virus. Yeah. However, let me just say that most people would do just as well with a, um, a flat mask or a surgical mask. Those masks are all also effective for distance. What we need those N95s for are when we're doing procedures on people that involve aerosolization, like coughing, anything that we might do to them that would cause them to cough or sneeze or anything like that. And so that's why those masks are especially essential to healthcare workers and first responders. And I was just about to ask you about first responders. So you're you're supplying them as well, the uh, uh, police departments and sheriff's departments. Well, we are trying. There is not an awful lot of them out there, and so there, of course, is always more need than there are supplies, especially now. And all of those departments are going through their emergency management agency, which is what they should do. And if the emergency management agency isn't allowed or available or have the means to fill their order, we are giving them a small supplement to keep them until they're able to get those supplies from the state. Good. Yeah. So how does uh, one contact you if they do have um, uh, a... Uh, supply of these masks? Uh, you, is there a process they go through? Uh, how do we? Do, how do they do that? There is. They can contact us. Um, they can either call us and let me look over and grab that number. It is uh, 219-576-7000. Two seven eight six. That's yes. five seven six. 219-576-2786. I okay. love it when somebody hands it to me right next to me. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and, Gosh, I wish um, I had but, that, but the person right? that helps me out is uh, doing social distancing with me now. So she's That's good. she's afraid That's to good. come near me. Doing it before it was cool though. <laughs> well, yeah. We're very we're very proud of you for practicing the social distancing. And she um, will continue also... it after this. <laughs> Uh, oh, good to know. Good to know. <laughs> the um, other, the other option is they can email us at logistics at nwi district one, and that's the number one, not spelled out. Dot us, and and that's an email that goes straight to our logistics people, and um, then we're able to get what they have and we'll schedule a pickup or schedule a drop off or whatever works best. Okay. And uh, can you say that email again? I can. It is logistics, L-O-G-I-S-T-I-C-S at N-W-I district, D-I-S-T-R-I-C-T, number one, not a number spot, but just one. Right. Dot U.S. Okay, great. I'll get that uh, when we post this video. I'll I'll make sure we include that in the the, um, the posting on Facebook. Um, really appreciate that. Are there any other supplies that you need besides the masks? Yes, we um, we could use hand sanitizer, uh, bleach wipes, or Clorox wipes, those kinds of things. Uh, masks 
and uh, flat masks or even homemade masks. We have a lot of people out there who are talking about sewing to be helpful. Yeah. And um, hospitals are looking into that, but definitely nursing homes are, are in great need. Oh, and so they have contacted us. And so that would be an absolutely wonderful thing to do. But also face shields, and there's lots of different things, but some sort of um, clear covering that covers the face to keep from splash or keep from, you know, like a sneeze guard, if you will. Sure. And uh, we're looking for gowns, like impervious gowns that are uh, like a surgical type gown that goes over your clothes. The, those are usually um, disposable. And I think that I think that I've covered all the main highlights. Okay. But those are the things that we're in need of. Now, it could is there? Do you guys have a Facebook page or a website that they can go to to, to get this list? Yes, we have a Facebook site and Twitter account, and the that is. Look at it. I don't want to misspeak. It go right is ahead. District One. And that's the number one, District 1, COVID, C-O-V-I-D, information. And that is for both Twitter and for Facebook. All right. So they can get the list of your needs and how to contact you and all there as well. Great. Great. So, uh, boy, we appreciate all the work that you're doing out there. This is a got trying times for everyone, and you, uh, you guys are... Uh, looks like you're the traffic cop in this, trying to get to the supplies in and get them out to the right people. So, boy, I tell you what, um, yeah, I keep telling people I've never seen times like this, and I'm going to turn 60 tomorrow. So, in my 60 years, I've never seen anything like this. Um, so, well, yeah. happy birthday to you. <laughs> well, yeah, I wish it were better times. I really do, because uh, guess what? I'm not going to be able to be hug my grandkids. Um, Especially with one, one has upper respiratory issues, and I don't even want to take a chance. But um, well, and and that is it brings me to a good point, and we really appreciate that you're social distancing, and we hope that everyone else is too. Uh, we do have a big concern about those who are not in school, not adhering to the staying home and staying safe. And so we're hoping to get the message out also that uh, kids need to stay inside because right. there's bad things outside. Yeah, we it's, don't want them and, dating or hanging out with buddies. We want them to be safe and stay inside. Yeah, it is uh, looking at the Indiana Health Department's figures that they've done a very, unfortunately, done a very good job posting and uh, notifying people when there are changes. It's a scary world out there. Um, we made the Certainly we made the conscious decision to um, we were in a beautiful studio in Executive Suite squared off of eighty ninety four, and uh, we thought you know and they said we can remain there uh, we're considered essential although I don't know but and, but as a matter of just trying to set an example we we moved our studio to our home to remain safe and and tell people hey you got to remain safe. You know, it's just not you. It's your elderly neighbor next door. It's anyone you could come in contact with. Uh, this goes out and beyond our own personal space. So, yeah. So we're, we're um, yeah, but we, again, hats off to you guys. And uh, if there's anything else you uh, need our help for, please. Uh, 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 Eric um, sent me a message early this morning. I happened to be up and got it. And so, if there's anything else, please feel free to email us and let us know, and we'll get the word out there. Absolutely. Well, I could tell you that there's some food banks that might need some assistance in helping hand out food. So, if anybody's like that type of interest, I know the Northwest Indiana Food Bank was looking for donations of food as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We yeah we right we sent out plus um, not only that is. They, you know, just assistance at their um, uh, their mobile markets, distribution, centers, distribution yeah. center, mobile markets. They've been heavily impacted. Uh, people that they usually ask to, you know, volunteer uh, can't make it in, uh, you know, or, you know, then they have the people that have to, that want to stay at home and uh, then they're handing out food. So they have to take extra precautions that they um, above and beyond what they were doing before. So, yeah, boy, that's another organization that's challenged to um, get 
get to help all the people in Northwest Indiana. And so, yeah, that's definitely of a concern. Well, uh, boy, is there anything else that you can, uh, that you want to share with the community? Um, we just want to thank everybody who has donated. And we ask that if they are um, still able to donate or have things or are sewing or whatever, we will get it to the right place and help the right people. Great. Thank you. And thank you for coming on our show. Um, we appreciate thank you for it. for all you're doing. Definitely. We appreciate it more than you'll know. Yes. Well, thank you for having us and um, stay safe. You too. you too. And we'll say goodbye for now. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye.